into the video, the video, video resolution, I was trying to cut down on the, it, um, the cooling and the heating and stuff. I'm going to throw this up on YouTube and I'm just not going to bother be concerned about it. People may jump on it and they might run with it. And there's some ways that I could really be tortured by this, but, um, I just want to make it out there that um, what happens in the tech world doesn't matter. What happens in your professional life doesn't matter. Your children don't matter. Your, your wife doesn't matter. Your family doesn't matter. None of this matters. It's just all a test. It's all to see the kind of individual you are is to test the individual you are and to test the decisions that you make and how you perform. And when you realize that, it's easy to be defeated, but I live every day with the novelty of life, um, of the novelty of being here and, and being a part of it. And I may have an effect on the world. Uh, I'm coming to the realization that I probably have zero effect on the world. And if I had an effect, they would put every, all their powers into trying to, um, into trying to uh, quell that, um, that chaos, to eliminate that, that chaos that would create in the grand scheme of this test. Um, that the future I'm in right now is just a result of making bad choices. Um, this is just a parallel universe to many different parallel universes. And the best case scenario, the parallel universe is where you live a very faithful life. You're able to move mountains and maybe even to perform magic acts just like Jesus did. Um, and I just didn't have that much faith to do that. And so I'm living in a world where there's no faith, where people are just living lives, um, kind of trying to, kind of trying to just to make ends meet, and there's no telling how godly they are. I mean, you just have to look at our president. We pick a ungodly man, and it's godly people that picked ungodly men. That's a sign that we're not in a heaven. We're not in a earth. We are in hell. And that's what the devil's telling me at every turn is that we are in hell right now. And it's just the beginnings of it. This whole thing that the devil has set up, if this is what, if maybe I'm just in a confined universe of my own, that's in the universe. It's kind of a sandbox that they've placed me in. And Anything that I do is going to have no effect on anything that God does in the rest of the test. Because if I was allowed outside the sandbox um, and people grasp my words for what I am saying, um, I could really destroy the test for everybody else. So there's no telling what kind of universe I am right now. If it's a parallel universe, I've seen that it's got... Um, it's got certain um, um, inconsistencies in it, and I feel like it's maybe a like a virtual machine uh, or a um, uh, an MVM type um, virtual machine, a multiple virtual machine type system, where the devil can take the image of the world, copy it, and create a separate working image, and put me in it and then just manipulate that towards me, to, towards uh, manipulating me, and that it carries on still, it has an instancing effect that it's really kind of still part of the world, but it's, but it's a, my own private hell, is what he's put me in. And uh, it's a cell, um, and it's a cell for soul crushing. And that's kind of where I feel that I am in the universe right now. But my hope is, is that at some extent, my behavior in this world, whatever it is, 
um, if I'm doing, uh, if I still have a ounce of, of um, goodness, that God will see that I'm consistent with him in that respect, in that alignment. Um, and this soul crushing is just the devil trying to get me into a more manageable form. And I will not do that. I'm not going to be manageable. I, I am going to flank him at every turn. Just as I flank everything at every turn. Um, that's just the, my game plan is to flank. And um, But whenever we're talking computers, I'm flanking in that I'm trying to get, um, if there is anything to be won here, it's the idea that people need to see that capitalism just produces really bad software. And um, so I do this on a different tape. I talked about the metaphysical, and you can see where I'm going with that. But you cannot put me in a box anymore. This is the box that I'm in, and I know that I am in. Um, and uh, you're not going to be able to turn me into... Knowing this, knowing what my metaphysical experience is right now, um, you are not going to be able to turn me into a widget uh, for capitalistic uh, endeavors, and it won't work. Um, I have already sold my cell, soul to open source, and it's the way I see the world needs to be uh, with software and uh, maybe I see Richard Stallman as a god um, in a way. Um, he is an atheist. And I don't see that as a problem with him. Um, I see that as probably that um, there's probably a chance in there that God will still um, be able to, to be a I'm a friend to Richard Stallman, even when Richard Stallman can't recognize him, God. Um, if Richard, it seems to me that what Richard Stallman does is good to other people. He sees good in treating other people well, and in that he's he's got a certain godly function about him, even though he doesn't worship God. And we need to see that in everybody. We need to see the value of everybody that um, God, uh, atheist or not, we need to see, I think God sees that, that we need to, um, we need to not write people off. Because the more we write people off, the more we are selling their soul to the devil. And the devil knows that I know this, that I know what's going on. And God knows what I'm, and God's, that's the reason why God, I think, is turning his back on me. And he's not, he's, what he's doing is he's saying, I see what you're doing. Keep doing what you're doing. I think what's going to really motivate you is if the devil pushes on you. Because it seems to be the way you work. And I'll let you do that. And I believe that you're going to come out good in the end. Um, and I need to point this out to everybody in the world that, um, that, um, and this is for Christians, and um, I'm able to go kind of outside of the box of being a Christian. I, I've been to the Christian space. The problem with Christians today is they believe that if they spread the word of, of God and all that stuff, and all they need to do is bring people to church, and they don't understand that being Christian like, means that you that you fundamentally fundamentally are turning people into them by how they treat people you have to treat people nicely you have to treat people better than they treat themselves you have to show them a universe of heaven you need to show them what heaven on earth is like. And if you're not in that respect, if you're not um, treating people 
with the best respect and you're trying to um, help them. If you're not doing that, then um, why are they going to want to be like you? Why are they going to want to go in your direction? So asking them to church is seems sort of respectful, but it's really jumping the gun. It's saying, um, um, you seem good. Um, why don't you come to church? Um, but then they don't ask the other question is, do I see you as good? Would I want to come to church with you? You see, you have to treat me well before I can become like you. You have to be like God in order to attract people to God. And being like God is what he means by being, by loving God with all your heart and soul and mind and stuff is being like what he says in the Bible about uh, shutting all these certain things, those attributes. He doesn't expect you to be all of them, but he expects you to try to be like him. And in that, you try to bring, you try to bring heaven to people. And if you're not bringing heaven to people, if you're not, for one thing, um, if you're not giving to man what his works are worth, if you're not, um, you know, one of the problems that they have, um, one of the problems that uh, something I've pointed out is that on Sundays, people never tip. I'm a bagger by trade in Kroger. And um, one thing I've noticed with people is they never tip on Sundays. They figure they've given their tithe. They don't have any reason to give the guy a tip. And just that example to me is proof that Christians do not care anymore. That they're, they're concerned about their own stuff. They're concerned about their earthly possessions. And it may be that I'm just in a parallel universe where people have made wrong decisions and I'm in my own private hell. But in any case, I'm going to always say, well, that's not a Christian there. That's not a Christian there. You know, these are not Christians. Christians would not pick um, somebody like Trump. That This is obviously uh, a mistake, this whole thing. But if you believe otherwise and you believe there can be change made in the universe and that this will make a change in the universe, then you will see that you need to be leading people to, to Christ. You need to be leading them to God. And um, I'm only going to point out that I'm not a very good example of that. But I can see from the position of a person on the outside, after having been a Christian, um, I can see from the position of a person on the outside um, that there is a failure of Christians in this universe. And that um, there, if they were more faithful, if they were more like God, then they they would uh, they wouldn't be asking me to go be in their choir, or be part of their church, or anything like that. They would be trying to invite me to their homes, and um, and they would be a per people that um, are much more godly than I who would treat me better than, and wouldn't expect me to go to church. Um, they might put it out there that they go to church and stuff like that. And, but um, it's through the magnetism that they produce that people are driven to be where they are and what they do. And Anybody who tries to do that to me um, without me, um, if somebody doesn't have a natural magnetism, um, I just don't want to be around them. You know, if they're not, if they don't have a magnetic personality, I just don't want to be around them. And that's just the way it is. And if you want to, 
if you want to harness the value that um if you want to bring people to Christ, if you want to be people, you know, try to prove that it is a better way. And, you know, that's, that's the challenge is to, is to try to put it into operation, to try to um, show why and to be an example of that and i and my sinful self has failed me a lot and and to a to such a degree that uh maybe god has just given up on me um and maybe i'm just doing this just to try to get uh back into the the scheme of things maybe i'm just being so crushed and and this is just uh mad a part of the process of uh, trying to make me more manageable to uh, what the devil wants me to do. But I'd rather just put these videos out and uh, I've got like 45 minutes. I got to be at work and, or I got to leave for work and I'm not going to let this bother me today. I'm going to do what I'm going to do today. I'm going to be successful at it. I'm going to have my lunch and I'm going to put on my VR headset, play a game for a couple of, for 15 minutes. And then I'm going to go back to work and then I'm going to get off work and I'm going to get back on VR or I'm going to do a blender tutorial to teach people how to make objects, which is what I was thinking about doing just now. Um, or I'm going to try to, uh, trying to get people to use my channel Z site or, you know, but just the fact that people won't do, they won't try out the VR, uh, you know, I'm, I'm pre presenting them things, you know, anything that I do, it doesn't seem like anybody wants to go my direction or wants to accept what I have. And that's my feeling that I am in hell is that I have no effect on the world. And uh, anybody that wants me to uh, try to live the game of the world I feel like that's I, I've been there I've done that I know the world will crush you and I don't want to be part of that that crushing experience I don't want to be defeated by the world I would rather take the world and put it in a box and say that's the world that's not me I'm not part of that um if I am part of that, it's it's because I'm, it's part of my history. I was part of. Uh, I had a, I had a life when I was growing up, and and I, I I'm attracted to the music of the culture, um, and maybe I see my value as being in that for some reason. But I just don't see myself as being a robot, and I don't want to be a robot. And I don't want to live the life of a robot. And I, when I die and go to wherever I go, I don't want to be a robot. I want to be um, someone who has the ability to, to do whatever it is that I want to do and go wherever I want to go and flank wherever I flank and... Um, to always be doing something different, to have the opportunity to to move into new frontiers and explore new things, and if not permitted that, um, the ability to reason, and if not the ability to reason, I will just ex be experiencing, and that kind of sounds like what heaven's going to be like and what hell is going to be like, is just experiencing. You're not going to have any reason to build, reason mean abilities it will not have any will to do anything else and i just don't see that as as a way to live eterni eternally um i would rather be if if it was my choice to do with my soul what i wanted to i would choose to be destroyed and to not ever exist ever again forever and ever um that would be my choice i would i like Having the will, I like having the reason, ability to reason and, and to do whatever I want to do. 
um, I don't see any value in in becoming a robot or becoming um, someone who can't has no capacity to reason or create or or extend um, from from where I shot from um, from from my beginnings. I don't see any value in it, and it, it just drives me up the wall whenever I think, you know, I'm supposed to be like a lot of these Christians that think you, you pray and before you make every decision, I'm just like, I could probably do that, but uh, that would make me feel like um, there is no, the, the universe is, um, is make-believe. And, and everything is, this is all a test, and the, it just makes me feel like there's, there's, I have very little to do with this, you know. And I guess that's the whole thing is that I, you have very little to do with it. It's all just, this is just a big, massive sandbox that we're in, and it, we're just, they're just seeing how we perform with people around us. And if we're going to step on other people's sandcastles, you know, um, but if they're to let us out of this world and to give us anything more, they don't uh, want us to turn on them and to destroy that existence. That they don't want another Satan. It seems like Satan, once he was created by God, um, God could only push him into a space, but because of the being that he is and how much <clears throat> and how powerful he is, it's very hard for God to hide Satan from from him his existence. It, Satan becomes a niggling um, um, distraction, uh, a Beelzebub, a fly that's always in your sphere of uh, existence and just keeps bugging you all the time. And that's probably what Satan is to God, um, is that constant bother. And I don't want to be part of that, part of that, but I also don't know if I want to be a robot. Uh, I just would rather be mis myself, and I'd rather not play this game, uh, this test. I'd rather not be in a test. I would ra rather not be in the test. And that's all I'm saying is I would rather not be part of this test. But I'll do other things, you know, because I've, you know, I don't have any, uh, my reasons for teaching people Blender, if I'm to teach people Blender, would only be to permit them to to see that they can do 3D, and um, and it would make me it makes me feel good whenever people learn, and that I'm teaching them something. That makes me feel good anytime that I can see that somebody's learning, but but after they leave me, um, I guess I just don't. I just don't value it much anymore, and I don't need that feedback, whereas a really good teacher probably would want the feedback to see if somebody's going in the right direction, see where they're going at, and that's probably where I'm failing, is that I don't try to maintain the relationships, but I, it's part of my own nature that I like to see people going in directions that um, I see uh, as valuable. You know, that uh, that they can do what they want to do with what I'm teaching them and they'll, they'll I'm giving them the tools to do what, what they're gonna, what they can do. Maybe they do that for bad or they do that for good. I don't know. It's a it's a it's a question of morals. It's a question of what you see is good and you know, there are certain people in the world that just don't 
um, that are about themselves and we call them psychopaths or sociopaths. And I don't feel like I'm a sociopath because I, I feel for other people. I, I'm concerned about them, but I'm easily manipulated because that by people who, who, who use that to uh, bring, um, bring them value and um, I'm just weak that way, I guess. But um, I'm always trying to, I, I see, I get certain pleasure out of seeing other people succeed at doing things. I don't gain a certain pleasure out of seeing people fail. Um, and, but I, there are people in the world that I just don't trust and Bill Gates is one of them. And, uh, I, the company that he's produced, um, is so intent on making money that they just do things to the point to where they don't even understand that they're destroying people. And, um, they don't understand how they're destroying people. They don't see the, the end result of what they're doing. They see that they've succeeded a lot in the world but they don't see what they're destroying. They are destroying stuff. Um, there, there's whole industries that are, that probably wouldn't exist if it weren't for them. But the question is, are, are is this success or is this um, delayed success? Um, are we experiencing things that could have happened 10 or 20 years ago? If Microsoft hadn't been around, um, what can we say that Microsoft was really um, important to the world? And there are a lot of people that are are very capitalistically in, in, um, inclined and um, don't have they um, they think everybody would be. They see that the value in people is what they can produce monetarily. Maybe they get a certain um, certain feeling that uh, they have helped people to become um, independent. And maybe they get a good feeling inside whenever they do that to people, making people independent and being able to use their talents. And I can see that as a good thing. But the thing that really turned me off was that I could never, that um, once I had the ability to create, um, I guess it was because I sinned that it, um, it led me down this path. But, um, Things that I wanted to be there are not, were, um, ceased to be for me. And I chose a path of life of, um, being rebellious. And I've been a rebellious, I am a rebellious spirit. I'm rebellious in the event, in the aspect that I'm rebellious towards, um, commercialized software. And because it produces a sort of, it produces software that fails people in some shape or nature. It um, only, it values money. And, you know, it says in the Bible, the love of money is the root of all evil. And you see that in commercialized software all the time. And you see that, you know, people... We've created this whole world with this idea and, and um, of making money and the greed is good and all that. And somehow the Christians have become aligned with this. And they don't understand that America is not God's country. God's country is the world. 
um, everybody in every country is part of, of is, is with God. And if you're thinking that it's exclusive to America, um, you're going down the path of the devil. This is just a distraction. He's just distracting. He's finding some way to get your soul invested in in where you are at in life and making you think that it is for God that you're doing things, but really God is wants people to be like Jesus was, and Jesus in effect shunned his family. He shunned everything that he was about. He became a different creation aside from the world. He was outside of the world. He lived a life of poverty. Um, he didn't really have uh, his 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 source of food and everything was God given. Um, he was the perfect the perfect Christian. He was the Christ. He was the example of the perfect Christian. And to be perfect, um, you have to be like Jesus. And um, that's the challenge. And I'm not probably not like that because I'm getting money from from other sources. I'm I'm part of the Bible that says anybody that lives by uh, uh, by any arm of flesh is uh, is not living a, a, is not aligned with God. Um, and so I I I'm not living by faith to God. I'm not living on the, um, that would probably be the way is that I would be living every day reliant upon my performance and being able to work and make money is, would be the way of being, of living a faithful life. Um, but I feel like I have to be kind of outside of the game and kind of have to see things that are, um, let's see, I just don't want to be part of this capitalistic system. I, I, I want to live life, I want to, but it, I'm, I'm just not, I will work, I will do whatever I need to do to make money, but I don't, but my talents, I don't see there a way for my, what I know to make any worth in this world. And now that I know that it's a test, I I'm, don't have much value for it. That it's, um, it's like it's like being in a race, not not realizing you're in a race, and once you realize you're in a race, you don't have much value for winning. Um, because you didn't want to be in a race in the first place, you wanted to be, um, you would rather um, run down the path that's more most interesting, not the not the race, you know. I would rather race a different race is, is the thing. And the race that I would rather ride, run is the race of success in virtual reality. No, it's whatever I'm exploiting at any day and whatever interests me. And, and it's easy for me to get really bored and once I get bored with something, then I go and I do something different. And this is the way of an artist. An artist is always losing interest in things and doing other things. It's, uh, you know, the path of creativity is uh, one way is to just keep doing the same thing over and over again, then they get better in it. Another way of doing it is to always be doing something different and exploiting what you can. Um, I think an entrepreneur is probably that way. So I'm kind of entrepreneurially, but I'm an entrepreneur that's not working for money. I'm a, 
socialistic entrepreneur. As I'm, a, I'm an idea. Um, I, I grasp onto great ideas and then I disseminate them and I, I let other people know that there's great ideas out there and these are them and this is what they look like and that's the kind of person I am and if I was to be employed at anything I would prefer it to be that and uh, but um, at the very least uh, if it comes down to that I'm, I can't do that I can be a great DJ or I can sing music, I can sing songs. I have various a, uh, avenues by which to express myself. And it, it's through the expressing of ideas, expressing, um, I, expressing just anything the way I see it, being able to express and being able to create and being able to do and being able to, that, that's what drives me every day. And um, I, I'm going to have to go to work in 30 minutes. So uh, the one thing I do before I go to work is I get on my iPad. And I'm going to have to power this sucker up because it's down on this last arm. I'm going to, whoops, I'm going to uh, hook him up. And, um, and I'm going to... Um, well, I'm in charge, and uh, I'm going to pick some songs out, and I'm going to sing, I guess it's going to be some Steve Miller band type songs. Um, I'm going to figure out what it is that I want to sing today, and I will be pushing carts and bagging groceries, loving life, um, shunning the, whatever the devil throws in my way, and um, singing songs while I'm on the lot, which uh, another thing is, is that you want to live a stress-free life. Um, if you're wanting to live a long life, it's got to be stress-free because stress-free uh, is um, is anti-arthrosclerosis. Um, um, it's not good for your heart to live a stressful life. And um, one way of getting away from stress is by one way is to, to pray, another is to sing, and we, um, and to express yourself in some way, whatever gives you, whatever drives you, um, something, find that something that lets you live life, that uh, lets you live a stress-free life, because that's the important thing, is if you're going to, that you're living life, um, and that you value life, that you have that thing that will that will keep you going each day. And um, working, being in a job, working in a grocery store, to me is just is just fine and dandy, you know. Um, it works out the demons. It makes the demons really see that they they don't want to be around you because you're just too productive and you're just unlike them you're not a pleasure seeker and i can't ever be that way and i lived my life a good bit of my time being someone who seek pleasure and um in that living life where i'm basically not working and if i had been working ever since i was in college for the much of my life, then I probably would have been a different individual um, and probably a better person. And I'm just starting on it late in life and it probably doesn't make much sense anymore to continue to doing it, but it satisfies me. And I think that's all that really matters is that, um, is that you live life uh, in a way that um, keeps you going and to get to the to the end of life um, really not uh, all much for that um, I'm more living for today living each day like um, like it's your last living each day trying to be um, trying to be, be um, productive and uh, then 
you know, living hard and playing hard, you know, just like that. Um, and that's just what I'm about. And I just don't like being manageable. I just, I shun being manageable. I, I'd rather be my own person. And that's where my selfish side is, is that if I get even an ounce of manageability from the managers that are in my workplace, they, if they can get any, le if they can leverage me in any way, I don't want to be there. You know, I'd re rather be unleverageable. If I'm going to be leveraged, I'm going to leverage myself. That's the way I work. And uh, so this is the end of the video, and I need to pick some songs. I'm going to, if I don't pick my songs, then I'm not going to be very productive today. So I'm going to, I know 70 plus songs. I'm pushing for 100, and we'll see if I make it. Um, uh, and then maybe after 100, I'll push for 200. And after 200, I'll push for 400. And then, and I'll just be this walking music man, you know. That's, uh, I'm even sick of the stuff I already know. I want to know, want to see more. So maybe that is my talent to be a musician. I don't know. But anything, uh, anything that I, that I, I exploit everything that I get to. And I've been in, I've been involved in a lot of stuff. I haven't been uh, uh, someone who's worked all my life and been in the industry, but I don't see people like this one guy was saying that all programmers are the same. They all have Android phones and blah, blah, blah. Um, I don't put people in boxes. I don't, I let them be who they are. And um, I have a unique, distinct way of looking at the world, I believe. And if I don't feel like I'm there, I feel like I want to be there. I want to have, want to be unique. I want to be different. And that's kind of a liberal point of view, you know, wanting to be, wanting to um, always change things. That's what I'm about is changing everything around and uh, not manipulating, not, not uh, skewing it, but I want, I don't want to be in a box. I want to be outside of, of any classification. I don't want to be classified. And I think that's the way a lot of people want to be. They just want to be individuals. They want to have their own way of doing things. Because once you put them in a box, then they feel constrained by it. They feel, they feel like they can't get anywhere with you. And so, um, they're they they feel like robots and i don't i refuse to be in a box i refuse to be part of a classification however i'll probably classify other people but i'll but i'll at the end of the day um i'll be i'll realize that i'm <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm probably doing wrong with the other people and putting them into a box you know I think we I think we put other people into boxes just so that we can try to get comfortable with them, you know. This is like an autistic way of looking at the universe that they can if they can live by a certain policy and they can get other people to live by that policy, then they can become comfortable with them. Um I think that's we try to do that to some extent. But the reality is, is that we're all different. And then we realize how different we are. Then we either are able to continue with our relationship or we just get disgusted. And that's just the way things go. Um, so I'm going to cut off the video now. I have to upload this as well as I have to do get my lyric thing going.